Today we're experiencing the world's all-time greatest bus seat, from the comfortability, to entertainment, to even being at one of the world's best bus stations for food. Now, when you ride buses in the US, for me, I go to the bus station like the absolute last minute. But around Asia, specifically in Japan and Korea, the bus stations are exceptional. Like. Just take a look at the food right out in front of me here. Now, the thing that I'm looking for here is kind of like the equivalent to a Japanese bento box. However, this is my first time in Busan, so I have no idea where these doshiraks are exactly. So, turn the adventure music on and let's go find these things. This one has the bimbap kimchi chige and like noodles, but no doshirak. I was a doshirak, where would I be? Also, side note, Every like mascot in Korea is so freaking cute. <laughs> More fish cakes. Doesn't look like Joshira. All right, I'm just gonna go up to one of the fish cake places and maybe they actually sell Doshira. 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 Uh, uh. take out there. Yeah, yeah, take out. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh, the struggle is real. Um, so. <laughs> I got this massive bowl of soup and fish cakes. I said doshirak, she said doshirak, she said okay, then I was like, uh, I'll go with that one. I have a hunch that says that's not a doshirak. Yeah, so I, I'm looking for a, uh, what is a doshirak? Uh, doshirak? Yeah. Doshirak is, uh, I, 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 I draw look at and rice, Kim, kimchi, egg, egg roll. So this is not a doshirak. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not that doshirak. Okay. It, ah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. this GS. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yes, uh, okay, fine. thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that that was not a doshira. Uh, I have found it. Looks like there's all different types of doshiraks here, like one with beef and egg, like some sort of pork cutlet. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. Since we're already in a convenience store, we might as well get a couple mystery snacks. So many ramens. Oreo looks so freaking cool and humble. An egg plate in soccer? Definitely gotta get that. Never tried dry squid before, so that looks interesting. And like always, one that absolutely scares me slash gets me outside of my comfort zone. Oh boy, Yo, here we go. I don't know why I do this to myself. We're gonna get the chip of the lady that is literally like, <coughs> why did you eat that? Okay, so we got our snacks. Time to go find our gate. So, it turns out that I actually wasn't an hour early. I was two hours early. <laughs> so I thought it was perfect timing for a Q&A set, so I asked you guys on Instagram. So first question comes from Black Steel Gaming. What did you do before YouTube? Super good question. So I started my YouTube at 23, and two years before that, I graduated from college. So during college, I discovered that I was more of like the entrepreneurial type kind of person. I loved creating different projects and seeing my ideas kind of progress over time. So when I was 18, I opened an SEO and web design company. And this was super fun. I did it four years during my college, really enjoyed it, but it was more so like a office type setting of a job. And I always had this dream of travel. I always had this dream of adventuring throughout the world. So that's what I did. I took the money that I made from that business and just started traveling. First I lived in Medellin, Colombia, lived there for six months, and then moved to Vietnam for six months and opened up my own free English center. And then after that, I traveled the world for about a year and then ended up in New York where I started this YouTube channel. So all in all, to sum up, following my heart, finding my direction. Daniel.y32 asked, what's the worst travel experience, by the way, you're awesome. Well, thank you, Daniel. You're very awesome, too. Second of all, the worst travel experience. Uh, it's honestly still so hard to think about this experience because it, it was just like, it was a moment that was awful financially and also a moment that broke my heart. You're making me feel better though, fish cake. So I had just gotten to Chile, I checked out the Atacama Desert, then I wanted to go from the Atacama Desert all the way down to Santiago. It's about a 25 hour bus journey or so. And then when we arrived to literally the first station, there was this guy that came on the bus saying, there's a guy stealing your bag downstairs, there's a guy stealing your bag downstairs. So everybody runs off the bus and is like, what, who's stealing our bag? We went downstairs to check and the bus operator was like, what, who's stealing your bags? Nobody's stealing your bag. It turned out that this guy then stole everybody's bag on the bus, which for me was awful. I had $3,500 of stuff from a computer to an iPhone to all my video footage from the past four years before that. Mm, 
still hurts so bad. But the learning experience here for me, and I felt this like directly after, I was like, the things that are most special are the things people can't steal from you, your memories, your experiences, the things you've learned all throughout your life. Next question comes from Megan's Lens. What's your favorite sushi filling? A lot easier question. <sighs> When I'm going healthy, I would say just straight salmon. For when I'm going all out, I would say spicy tuna with breadcrumbs on top. Mmm, pretty good. Next question comes from Andre Musat1. Will you come to Romania? Honestly, man, I want to visit every country in the world, so yes. So I gotta get going like now, but leave a comment below if you guys want more Q&A sessions. This is the first one I've done in a long time. And also comment any questions you have below for the next Q&A. Entering this bus, the first thing I noticed was just how different the seat layout was. Like normally in a bus, you'll have around like 50 to 55 seats, and this one had less than half of that, making for, as you'll see, an absolutely ridiculous length of leg room. Now, arriving to the seat itself, not gonna lie, was probably the happiest I've ever been arriving to a bus seat. Making me feel like from the presentation to the features, like I was on a first class airplane. So without further ado, let's start the comfortability review. Now, first thing I noticed, which is pretty much unheard of on a bus was the privacy. On every seat, there was a sliding curtain, allowing you to have a full private experience while sitting in your seat. Now, in terms of the seat itself, each seat is made with 100% leather and most definitely is the most comfortable bus seat I have ever sat in. Also, and I question myself saying this, but this is the only seat that I would ever describe as being absolutely Okay, moving along. Now, of course, another massive thing in buses and pretty much all transportation is the legroom. And this one certainly did not disappoint with having an underground space for your backpack or luggage and a large gap to rest your feet. But, you know, best of all has to be... Ooh, this seat reclines. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, this is comfortable. I'm literally in like a 180 position right now. Comfortability in bus terms? So in terms of entertainment, I was pretty blown away again with having both an incredible range of things to watch for TV or movies, but also the technology offered of being able to mirror your phone onto the TV screen and also a pretty funny feature requesting a personal private stop at a rest station. Now, another huge part of a user experience on a bus comes from the little things offered, such as a dual USB port for either charging your phone or putting in a small drive to watch a movie or if that doesn't work every seat they offer a freaking wireless charger oh my gosh i am like legit surprised at that work so in hour three i began to get a bit hungry so of course this is the hour of food discovery time. So because it was so difficult to find, first up is the Doshi Rock. Having anything from kimchi pork to beef to rice to tofu to various types of veggies. And let me tell you, after tasting the beef and kimchi pork, whew, the amount of effort it took to find this thing was 100% worth it. But, um, <laughs> yep. I almost had my food fall over me. But moving on to the snacks, we have possibly the best packaging of a banana playing with a soccer ball. And I caution all of you for this very, very unfortunate occurrence, but in three, two, one. I'm very disappointed at my opening skills. But in terms of the taste, it kind of was like a banana Captain Crunch cereal, just with a pure banana taste, which, do I like it? I mean, it, it was an experience. And then there was the big boy. The snack that had not only fire on it, but a woman screaming to literally not eat the snack. Ow. 
I gotta say, this is why these things scare me so much. This had zero spice to them, like nothing, making you truly not know what you're gonna taste when you have a fire on the pack. We're arriving. I don't wanna leave, I don't wanna leave, I don't wanna leave. Come something like that. Wow, that was the best bus experience of my life.